field uh, within the country. Um, uh, we, our holdings include uh, 2,500 manuscripts in Arabic, Persian, and Turkish, uh, nearly half a million books, uh, tens of thousands of photos, archival materials, ephemera, and uh, music. Um, the, one of the emphases of uh, the National Library of Israel as a whole and the collection in particular is digitization. Um, we've launched a number of large-scale digitization projects within the past several years. Uh, the first being Jiraid, um, a project to digi digitize our entire collection of historical Palestinian newspapers uh, from the Ottoman and British Mandate periods. Uh, that project was completed a few years ago and uh, has brought otherwise unavailable uh, newspapers, uh, periodicals from from historical Palestine uh, to the world, uh, to the research community. And we're now in the midst of a project to digitize our entire Islamic manuscript collection uh, and to which has actually been completed the digitization work and now we're building a dedicated portal for searching, viewing, downloading, uh, and sharing the manuscripts. Um, and those uh, are both of those projects and our other digital materials are open to the public at large around the world for for open access and downloading and use. Um, that brings me to the actual topic that I wanted to share today. Uh, so let me share my screen if I can. Um, So uh, the um, so uh, a few years ago, the the library had the opportunity to acquire an important and really unique uh, collection uh, that expands our holding significantly, and it relates to the work of Dr. Clinton Bailey, uh, whom you can see in this photo, uh, an American-Israeli researcher who's, uh, over the course of uh, five decades, has amassed um, a uh, one-of-a-kind oral history collection related to Bedouin communities in Israel. Um, Bailey was born in Buffalo in 1937, uh, studied uh, both in Jerusalem at the Hebrew University and uh, earned his PhD at Columbia. Uh, he moved uh, to Israel uh, in 1967 and uh, ended up in stable care, uh, the small kibbutz where the founding prime minister, David Ben-Gurion, was then living. Um, based on an encounter between them, uh, which is the way that, uh, that Bailey tells it, he became interested in uh, researching and exploring and getting to know the Bedouin communities uh, that live in the immediate area. Um, that uh, first, those first encounters in the late 1960s developed into five decades of, uh, of interviewing, recording, um, and uh, documenting Bedouin culture. Um, now, Bailey, uh, uh, as I said, he, he, uh, he recorded interactions with Bedouin communities, both within uh, the local Negev desert region in the south of Israel, also in the Sinai Peninsula and in Jordan. Uh, in total, there's 350 hours of recordings from 317 interviews. Uh, these relate to a number of topics uh, that were his particular research focus at the time, Bedouin law, uh, oral traditions, including poetry and proverbs, and uh, society, daily life and the Bedouin society. Um, the, we at the library were interested in, in having this collection um, uh, because it filled a number of gaps for us. Uh, first, we, uh, it helped considerably expand our holdings related to Bedouin communities in Israel, uh, and the library has a mandate to uh, document and preserve the 
cultural life and materials related to all of the different communities of Israel. Um, but even more so, uh, these recordings document a, uh, a culture in transition, um, linguistically uh, and also in terms of societal structures, Bedouin culture in the country has undergone massive change uh, from the late 1960s until today, both in terms of urbanization uh, and also changing mores, changing customs, changing society, uh, and changing dialects. Um, so these recordings, which uh, are really unique, no one else was doing work at this like this at the time, um, help preserve uh, uh, help preserve evidence of Bedouin culture that would otherwise be lost. Um, the project um, contains a number of aspects. Uh, so uh, Clinton Bailey himself did his recording on audio tape, um, and the quality is. Uh, it varies. Uh, in the earlier material, especially um, as you'll hear in a moment, uh, the quality is not very good. So uh, first part of the project, of course, was digitizing this entire collection, uh, uploading it to our website and cleaning up the sound quality as much as we could. Uh, we also engaged in uh, cataloging uh, the collection in Arabic, uh, Hebrew, as well as in English. Clinton himself uh, was working in English as an English speaker and an American, uh, and we undertook to transfer his metadata into our systems uh, to cross-reference it at subjects, uh, and also to translate it into the three languages in which the library works. Um, uh, in addition, we've built a dedicated project portal uh, for the project to enable access um and ease of access uh for users around the world um so i'm going to uh stop sharing for a moment um because i want to show you the project page and uh So this is the Arabic page for the project, um, uh, which contains information about Clinton Bailey himself, and also a link to the uh, to the cataloging records within um, our uh, our online cataloging system, um, and also contains a, a sample, a number of representative recordings. Uh, so I want to click on one. Um, with Salim and Jazi. For you to listen to. And this is Clinton. so as you can hear uh from the recording itself there's a, a great these are real field recordings um there's a lot of background noise uh Clinton Bailey is speaking with his informant, and around him, there's other people talking, there's other noise in the background. Uh, so in order to uh, make these recordings uh, easier to use and, and more, uh, more useful for, for the scholarly community, we're also engaging in transcription, uh, a process of transcribing the earliest set of recordings from the 1960s and 1970s, uh, which will also go up on the website alongside uh the the interviews themselves and also a set of photographs that accompany the material 
uh, that transcription part is the is the most difficult part of the project, and we're engaging with it now uh, with the help of international partners. And I would uh, be very open to more collaboration and help uh, on that part of the project. Um, and finally, we are uh, intending to host a seminar related to uh, oral history of Bedouin communities. This material and uh, Clinton Bailey's work uh, in particular, once the different project stages have been complete. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I look forward to any questions. Can't hear you online.
design and evaluation of uh, service submission form, electronic form in phase one, and also to design a program service to be scheduled and create a contents management in the system, creating also partnership from the libraries in the Middle East that will participate in this project. So these project requirements, it have some requirements to be uh, used in this project. We need to have legal requirements like a copyright and also process re processing requirement, technical requirement, human requirement and financial requirement. This project need to have some sponsor from uh, uh, from one institution or any part to support this idea or to support this in, uh, innovation to be implemented. The expected outcome of this project to transfer human experience between generation in the Middle East so the new generation can know more about something is not written in the book. This expertise will talk about something is not written or make some documentation so we human library can keep this conversation in a big database and also can create in home porch community in the Middle East and North Africa. The outcomes also achieving the psychological and family stability in the Middle East region and achieving sustainable development and transmission of sharing the different of experience between generation. The project opportunities, some opportunities uh, for this project to be implemented in the Middle East. So uh, one of these opportunities enable human library uh, user in the Middle East and North Africa to use the interact with exper expertise instead of using traditional information resources like a book and the collection in the library. And also transfer human experience between generation direct, between human to human. So human can give some experience, information direct to human. And to save the user time in the search of information in the database, so we can get information direct. We can ask, ask the expertise people and we can get the answer direct. And also reading the human book may help many beneficiaries turn their life from negative to positive and the session may be the reason for solving numerous family to social problems. The, there are some challenges for this project. The first challenge we need to face how to create the database to keep all this collection in one place. And also uh, there is a lack of, of time for expertise because we need to have these people to come and to speak or to talk to the user. So this is a big challenge for this project to contribute the service in a specific time and also lack of volunteering culture and teamwork in many community. So uh, also uh, this project need to make some information literacy about the, the volunteering work to achieve the goal of this project. So finally, the initiative to establish library, human library in the Middle East and North Africa is an expression of the idea of the Arab human library to be open, opening up to non-Arab community in the Middle East region to create a united and interactive society and bring about community develop by covering all the needs of beneficiaries and also creating a human library in the Middle East and North Africa will provide opportunity for experienced people to share their knowledge and experience direct 
that led to the new generation in the Middle East, in the Middle East and North Africa region, which young people can use the knowledge to achieve social development and create a united interactive community by sharing the experience in human library. The human library also project also will promote the role of libraries among the community and libraries in the third place, as well as the contribution of library to sustainable development to support for the implementation of the United Nations Vision 2030. Thank you for your time. And if you have any question, please, I'm here to answer your question. Thank you. The next presenter uh, will be Mr. Yunus Abakai. He's a PhD student at the Institute of Arab and Islamic Studies at Exeter University. His research focuses on Kurds in Syria. He holds a master's degree in Middle Eastern politics from SOAS, University of London, and a bachelor's degree in public administration from Istanbul University. He's going to make his presentation online. Can you hear me? Can you, sh can you confirm if you can hear me, please? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you all for uh, for being there and the uh, opportunity to uh, present uh, uh, some recent events that are going on at the Exeter University where um, a center for Kurdish studies. In fact, it is the only center for Kurdish studies in the UK um, that is based. Uh, but while also um, giving you some uh, details about a recent development in uh, archival work, as well as uh, digitization of them to make it accessible to researchers uh, all um, around the world, I would like to draw your attention to the role of the libraries in the way that um, it has impact on in on orienting um, the uh, the research and to the extent that uh, it can um, it can go just from my own experience uh, uh, I'm doing a PhD so I'm not a librarian I'm um, 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 doing more of uh, social theory uh, but I work with the archival work um, for cataloging um, and as well as for my own research that I had the chance to do so um, and, and I think this was one of the difficulties of not finding enough resources to work with that I had to make up to it by uh, conducting two field work um, that uh, lasted uh, overall uh, over eight months. Uh, so um, um, here is the presentation layout uh, and uh, there are a few archives that I will uh, touch upon. Uh, but before that, I would like to give you just a brief um, information about the Kurds and the works uh, uh, on Kurds, Kurdish studies. Uh, so I assume that most people in the room uh, as well as on uh, Zoom are familiar with the Kurds that I don't need to go much in detail, but they are a nation of approximately uh, 40 million people living in the Middle East. They are um, divided, their, their land is divided between four countries, um, Turkey, Iraq, uh, Iran, and, and Syria. Um, the knowledge about um, Kurds uh, has um, a political uh, uh, meaning attached to it that that it's very much securitized and it's hard to produce knowledge and therefore there are uh, unfortunately uh, uh, barriers. Um, but we have uh, studies conducted from uh, uh, early 19th century with uh, Russian uh, and Polish uh, Orientalists. Here I just provided names of uh, three most uh, important figures, Vasil Nikitin, Vladimir Minorsky, and August uh, Alexander Jabba. Uh, later, of course, uh, Kurdish, uh, as well as before that, a Kurdish intellectual was also producing knowledge, like Hawar Journal that uh, set the Latin alphabet for the Kurdish, um, as well as uh, Kurdish intellectuals in Armenia, Georgia, and later uh, in Sweden and across uh, Europe that uh, turned um, uh, 
places outside Kurdistan uh, hub to uh, study Kurds, to preserve the knowledge about the Kurds. That, for example, this was the case with the first Kurdish uh, newspaper, Hawar, uh, published in late uh, 19th century, that it was published in Egypt, but not uh, uh, in the Ottoman land. When we came to 20th century, uh, uh, nation states built in the region, uh, they brought uh, restrictions over uh, even recognizing uh, uh, people like Kurds uh, in the region, uh, that there was a hegemony in knowledge production. And in this sense, uh, libraries in the countries, as well as the universities, uh, were means of producing knowledge that in fact denied uh, uh, that the existence of the Kurds uh, um, to the point of creating theories to to, to create a subject uh, that were appropriate to the ideal of the nation states that the Kurds uh, live. And this inevitably affected uh, the scarcity of accessible resources um, in uh, studying the Kurds. And in this sense, I think the, the law of the libraries uh, abroad uh, has, um, uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, archivists who collected uh, archives, like for example, in Armenia, uh, in, in Georgia, uh, there were uh, many people uh, collecting um, resources that later they, they were given to uh, uh, centers in, in Europe. Uh, one of them is the Center for Kurdish Studies here in Exeter. Uh, the reason that people uh, donate uh, their collections to Center for Kurdish Studies here uh, at the Institute of Urban Islamic Studies uh, at Exeter uh, is instability in the region uh, that they don't want to put uh, those uh, uh, valuable materials uh, at risk. Uh, the control over knowledge production about the Kurds and censorship that I mentioned. Uh, the distrust in the governments, not just uh, uh, governments uh, 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 that uh, oppose, uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, for example, the Kurdistan regional government, that they uh, people don't have uh, trust and therefore they don't want to donate their uh, archives. Um, this is also related to party politics uh, that uh, similar to the government, there's also uh, censorship on uh, of, of parties over uh, what uh, knowledge uh, should be accessible. And this, of course, uh, creates concern for uh, people who want to donate their archives uh, as uh, they are afraid of uh, lack of uh, accessibility for people around the world. Uh, there are also financial and political uh, problems that they don't have uh, financial and institutional support to establish a hub that would bring uh, materials uh, across the world um, uh, about the Kurds. Uh, Jean Archive based in uh, Suleymaniya and Kurdish Heritage Institute in the Hawk is our, our, our two examples that are recently uh, started uh, bringing uh, materials uh, across Kurdistan um, and preserving it. And now they are also going to digitize it with the uh, DAME project here uh, at Exeter that I will come uh, a bit later, which turned uh, Exeter into a safe and stable hub where uh, many uh, more uh, archival materials um, uh, uh, could come uh, and sort of bring all those pieces together to establish uh, a ground for uh, researchers to access all uh, at the same time, and now it's going to be globally available. So one of them that I worked on was uh, Omar Shekhmus uh, archive. Omar Shekhmus um, is a Syrian Kurd who is uh, living in uh, Sweden. Um, he's a uh, founding member of the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan, and it was uh, he was in charge of uh, Foreign Relations Committee. Um, uh, he left his PhD and uh, joined the PUK leadership to fight against uh, Saddam. Uh, therefore, he had access to uh, valuable resources. And uh, he was also a personal advisor to Iraq's uh, President Jalal Talabani between 2000 and 2012. His archive consists of uh, personal papers, notes, uh, letters, periodicals, uh, new papers, uh, pamphlets, um, as well as uh, uh, um, other uh, uh, materials that are related to uh, party politics. Uh, 
uh, including foundational documents and internal memos uh, and his own uh, library uh, that he uh, donated. I'll share uh, some of the features that I took uh, from the uh, archive that he uh, donated. Uh, uh, these are some more that uh, it's not only uh, Kurdish parties, uh, but also, for example, here in uh, like Iraqi Communist Party that they have like letters that have exchanged um, and a sort of uh, it, it includes uh, uh, sensitive uh, uh, information of that time, of course, not now that it's uh, uh, available uh, to public. There are more uh, elements here that I wanted to uh, share with you. Uh, the other one is uh, Chris Kochera uh, archive, uh, which uh, constitute of um, over 100,000 uh, uh, pictures. Here I have some details. Uh, Chris Kochera is a pseudonym of uh, couples Paul and Edith uh, Mubik. Edith was a photographer and uh, Paul was a journalist. So they were, um, they were freelancer uh, journalists, uh, worked uh, in the Middle East, not just... Um, uh, on Kurds and Kurdistan, but uh, also in uh, many other countries. However, they came to be known uh, fundamentally for uh, the valuable uh, visual materials that they had uh, about the Kurds. Uh, uh, it also includes uh, letters that they received uh, from uh, 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 leadership of political parties and uh, uh, Paul uh, Mubik's uh, hand notes, uh, uh, as uh, you may be able to see, for example, about Algeria, uh, as well as um, other countries, they're just uh, not yet uh, available uh, to public. Uh, however, uh, Edith Mubik started uh, a, a digital platform where she uh, started sharing uh, Kurdish, uh, Kurdistan's uh, photo library online. Um, this website is going to be under administration of the university. The other one is uh, Jonathan Crusoe papers. Uh, Jonathan Crusoe was a journalist uh, working for the uh, Middle East uh, uh, Digest. Uh, and um, uh, he, he was mainly working on, on, on the Gulf, but when he was uh, doing works on Iraq, he also produced, uh, he say, uh, sorry, um, uh, uh, archived uh, a lot of materials um, related to Kurds, where it sort of brings him to uh, uh, to, to this uh, uh, presentation. Uh, uh, another one is John Wilkinson uh, papers that includes uh, a lot of uh, materials about Kurds, including uh, some uh, handwritten annotations a map uh, from. C.J. Uh, Admins, who was a British uh, diplomat uh, in, in Iraq. Uh, so the last one is uh, that I want to mention is the DAME project. Uh, it was started with the uh, partnership uh, of uh, University of Sichuan in Beijing in 2019, and it is planned to make it uh, uh, make uh, Arab documentation unit that has over 100,000 materials, uh, as well as uh, in partnership with Jin Kurdish Digital Archive and Kurdish Heritage uh, Institute to bring the materials that they have uh, online, uh, part of the, the DAME, making it available uh, people in Kurdistan as well. And, 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 and lastly, uh, a, a new platform, Virtual Reading Group, where if there is any um, unclear part in these uh, digital uh, digitized uh, materials um, uh, could be um, given uh, live uh, sessions to uh, researchers to read uh, that particular uh, part that is not clear in the digitized versions. So uh, in, in this uh, sort of, with my studies about the curves and, and, and the knowledge about the uh, uh, Kurdish people. One of the difficulties I myself had, and and many researchers uh, that works on Kurds uh, have, uh, is a lack of uh, 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 resources uh, that are not included in the libraries, and therefore it inevitably uh, shapes the way uh, research take place. Um, and and of course it has its own politics or economics that it requires fundings, uh, but in 
in, in, in this sense, um, it has impact on, on research because library sort of makes uh, uh, researcher uh, what available and inevitably it uh, at some point limits to the extent that they go. Um, and, and recognizing what is missing in the library is an important element that I want to uh, uh, bring your uh, bring to your attention. Uh, so in this sense, uh, recognizing the language, recognizing the people, uh, also brings more valuable resources into a uh, library um, that uh, enables uh, many materials produced in other languages uh, uh, to, 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 to be um, archived. And, uh, and, and this sort of enables to go beyond like macro uh, level of politics uh, that uh, is usually dominated by the hegemonic force uh, to uh, allow materials related to uh, minorities to come into libraries and make them accessible uh, to, to people. And with the, for example, the project that is aimed to be uh, done, make it also accessible for people who are not able to uh, access resources uh, in the West. Uh, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> so let me get the room here. Yeah, my question is actually to Yunus uh, for his presentation about the Kurdish uh, minorities. Uh, do you have any plans to have some of that digitized? I was very curious about seeing the um, 100,000 photos uh, from one of the photographers or archives that you got. And it's really great to uh, have some of that digitized, but definitely there would be a big question about copyright and things like this. So uh, what, what you can put online, what you cannot put online and things like this. The other thing that I also want to ask about is um, extra university when you are doing that all work, uh, it will be kind of known as a place for the Kurdish uh, diverse uh, uh, or diaspora around the world to probably have some more added to that collection or to donate, to collaborate, to work with you in some way. Uh, what are the plans in this situation? So this is my question to Yunus and my uh, comment to Christoph um, is actually about Berkeley uh, database for um, Western African manuscripts. It has about 50,000 entries there. And this is kind of exactly what you do in, uh, in, in your library for having bibliographic information about manuscripts. So this will be kind of a, a, a good collaboration project between Berkeley and uh, your institution. And thank you. Um, thank you very much for your question. Uh, I just would like to give some uh, more brief uh, information about uh, Chris Kuchera um, archive that uh, 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 it just doesn't include those that they uh, themselves shoot, but also those that they collect while uh, traveling around um, in the Middle East. Um, and this is not just about the Kurds, but also includes uh, a lot of more materials. Uh, uh, related to countries that they have been, which I think uh, cover most of the uh, MENA region uh, overall. So they have like uh, over 80,000 um, uh, 30 millimeters uh, transparencies, over uh, 46,000 black and white uh, negatives, uh, 12,000 color negatives, uh, and uh, they are all uh, noted. Um, so uh, in terms of the copyright, uh, uh, one of the, I think, uh, creative things that uh, Paul and Adit uh, Moby couples did was that they preserved the rights over the use of the photographs that they have taken and then provided to uh, platforms that they, uh, that they published. So there is no issue with the copyright because they, uh, they have the copyright and uh, hopefully um, the plan is to make them uh, available uh, springtime uh, next year although spring comes late to Britain, but hopefully it's going to be like a March uh, and, and, and April. Um, so the other question about the Center for Kurdish Studies, um, uh, it's part of the uh, Institute of Arab and Islamic Studies uh, where we have uh, uh, Iranian Persian Studies, European Center for Palestinian Studies. Uh, uh, we have uh, Gulf Studies, uh, Islamic Studies, Islamic Archaeology. Uh, Middle East politics, there are like many other centers uh, that are part of the, the Institute, which sort of brings more, I think, collaboration 
between uh, researchers studying uh, across the region, which uh, happily uh, the uh, the institute was uh, elected as uh, one of the best. I think the best. Uh, 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 center in uh, Middle Eastern Studies here in the UK. Uh, this year it's a survey that the government uh, conducts uh, uh, five years uh, at a time, so it, hopefully it will bring more uh, funding uh, to the Institute and they will enable, uh, as you say, uh, attract more people to donate their um, archives. There are more collaborations going on, for example, with Mesopotamia Foundation uh, in Turkey, uh, which was uh, 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 started to become a Kurdish university uh, in Turkey, but the political uh, situation uh, is not allowing it yet to, to happen, but there's a collaboration with them as well. Uh, there are also uh, more uh, small-scale uh, uh, collectors uh, around Kurdistan as well as Europe, and they are also ready to uh, donate, but of course it requires uh, uh, funding for that uh, to be uh, transferred. But it's also happening like in Germany, Kurdish Research uh, Institute also a, is, is bringing more uh, audio and other materials that they are collecting from individuals to sort of preserve the knowledge uh, to transmit it to, uh, uh, you know, uh, not just to further gen uh, gen generations, but also make it accessible to uh, uh, all around the world with the uh, Dane project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes. Um, hello, my name is Huda Dayton. I have a question for Jacob uh, regarding the uh, Israeli National Library. Was there someone? Someone, yeah. Huh? Jacob? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Samuel? Okay. Okay. Oh, that was Stanford. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, too much of Jacob. That's why. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Samuel. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have a question about the Israel National Library. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the the project of uh, collecting the data and oral history of the Bedouins in uh, Naqab and uh, Sinai is extremely impressive. And uh, I'm sure we you will ha you will have a lot of researchers, uh, you know, uh, using the the uh, the data. Uh, my question to you: uh, Do you consider, or, or did you uh, collect the data and the history of the Arabs before 1948? Uh, thank you, thank you for your question. Um, in terms of collecting information about Palestinian communities before 1948? 48, yeah. The Palestinians, so, 1948, before Israel, then for the Palestinians, 1948. Because they, because they have, the thing is, we received some questions about the newspapers used to be published before 1948. And several times, actually, I referred the researchers to your website, the National Library. Is there right. a little, so that's why I'm asking if you're going to do the same project. Thank you. Uh, we have, um, okay, well, uh, I'll, I'll answer what uh, I think uh, you're referring to. And then if, if uh, you still have further questions, I'd be glad to, uh, to expand. So there, as I mentioned, there was a project uh, in which we digitized our entire collection of Palestinian newspapers from the Ottoman and Mandate periods uh, up until 1948. And in the case of Al-Etihad, which began publishing in 1944, that actually is digitized until 2002. Um, in addition, uh, there's a number of other materials in the collection related to Palestinian history and culture before 1948. Um, I can think in particular of, uh, of uh, a collection of photographs um, documenting Palestinian communities from in the 1940s. Uh, there was an Israeli photographer, Benno Rothenberg, um, who uh, was working in, in a number of different places, but uh, in 1947 and 1948, 
uh, as uh, the war was ongoing. So there's documentation in those photos, which we've cataloged in Arabic, uh, Hebrew, and hopefully in English, but not yet. Uh, there's documentation in those photos of Palestinian villages and towns uh, right in that period of, uh, of the war. Um, and those are all, uh, are not yet uploaded onto the website. The photos are, but the information isn't. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that the, uh, once the uploading is completed, uh, we wanted to be sure that they're fully searchable also in Arabic, uh, because they're important primary, uh, primary in source. In recording you, you, you played for the Bedouin is very impressive. Uh, do you have something similar to the Palestinian before 1948, some oral history? We, as far as I'm aware, no. Uh, no, that's not quite true. There's, we do have in the collection uh, ethnographic recordings um, made by uh, German Jewish immigrants in the 1940s. Um, the better part of the National Library's music collection those have not all been digitized and they're not fully cataloged. Uh, they exist, but that's one of the one of the goals for us uh, for the coming, probably not the next year, but in 2024, is to try and deal with the music collection, uh, which contains a great deal of information. Uh, there's um, traditional folk songs, there's uh, interviews, I believe, um, and uh, and other materials that sound are. Um, so this this Clinton Bailey collection is actually opening uh, opening a new area for us at the library uh, dealing with uh, oral history and oral. So, uh, so I hope to be able to report more. Yeah, thank you, because this is very important to us. We receive a lot of questions about the Arabs before 1948. That's why it's good to know. Thank you so much.